Russell, good morning. Morning. Uh, how's the team? How's the squad fitness wise and everything? Have you got Stuart back? And, uh, yeah, Stuart's back in the squad. Yeah, and Breezy, obviously. So um, is is a really good thing. Um, so yeah, there's going to be maybe one or two left out of the squad that will be will be difficult uh, for sure. But everyone is fit, everyone is firing, um, and we we definitely need a reaction after uh, Saturday. You were happy with the clean sheet Saturday, obviously, and the, and the graft in a difficult game away from home. What have you looked at since that you think you could unlock a bit more at the other end of the pitch that you would have been yeah, missing? It's, on it's the only thing I'm happy about. I'm not happy with the performance one bit. So um, we'll be really clear with the players what we. What we think is the problem on Saturday, I'm happy with a clean sheet, I'm happy with the willingness to defend the box and the mentality, which was much better, which we asked, but I'm not, um, I'm not happy with much else about the performance, to be honest. When you've got lots of games coming up, there is always the temptation to, you have to rotate the squad a bit, but the, you always get everybody thinking, well, just, you know, can you play your best team? And I don't know if there is a best team in the modern game or whether it's the best team for each game. How, how do you get that, those partnerships and relationships right while you keep having to keep everyone fit yeah I think um, when we were like 25 unbeaten we made a change or two to the team and it didn't really disrupt things that much because we're in flow at the minute uh, we're not quite in that flow so then every change you make or every um, tweak you make is questioned when you win people don't question things because the game is so outcome based um, but it's up to us to look beyond that and now try and prepare and get real good momentum for the playoffs is really that simple. We'll try and win seven games and see where that takes us. Um, but now everyone is playing to make sure they are part of the best team that is uh, capable of getting us to the Premier League. It's really that simple. I'm, we can't pretend anything else. So um, people will get opportunities to show what they can do. Is uh, You have to earn the opportunity for sure. Um, but at this minute in time, there isn't a best team because we haven't won enough games. So... Um, yeah, it's really that simple. The lads need to be desperate to be in the team, desperate to get to the Premier League, desperate to stay in the team, desperate to push the players when they're not in the team. Um, and, yeah, the ones who are desperate will, will be the ones that end up playing. I'm glad you said about flow, because I wanted to ask you about rhythm. Your team's so good when they're in rhythm and things are almost automated. Those, those relationships on the sides with the midfielders, the wingers, the fullbacks. And, and maybe that's gone a little bit in recent weeks, that automated way they were playing. Is there a reason for that or is that just the ups and flows of a season? Yeah, I don't think so. Middlesbrough missed two chances from six yards out and we should win three or four nil and then no one talks about rhythm. Um, Ipswich for 65 minutes, so much rhythm, incredible uh, performance. So rhythm is dictated by how much you want to run, is my feeling on it. Um, and, and you find rhythm by sacrificing yourself for the team, by running to free someone else up. At the minute, as a group, we don't run enough. It's really simple. Is that tiredness? No, it's not. It's not. It's, uh, it's my fault if I can't convince them to run enough. But if we don't run enough, there's a big problem. The other the factor that I was thinking about that is we were so happy that you had a three week break. And I just wonder if it was possibly too long, as in players need to keep, stay. Yeah, that, listen, at the if top it's three weeks with a group together, it's brilliant. Right. But it was a week with the group together, three days of training, and everyone off, went off to internationals and all that stuff. But. It's not an excuse. We came back and um, what was the first game back? Middlesbrough. Yeah. yeah, and we should win. So like we can see the goal in the 90th minute or whatever. Um, how we took one point out of Middlesbrough and Ipswich is beyond me. So there's not like a huge problem with performance. There's a problem with the last bit, and I said that to you that the difference between us and Ipswich was the Ipswich desperation to fight and defend their box and defend their goal. And when they got near to our goal, all in all in um, and we're not all in enough at the moment and when we were you saw the results that happened in that period we were in that ma that moment we were in and now we have we're fortunate we have four weeks to get back into that um, period and I want to get back into it as quickly as possible and we're really clear on what what we need to do to get there and now it's our job to convince the players that they need to do the same so we have a really strong foundation the way that we play and if you play any way whether you go direct whether you play out whether you are transitional team the most important bit is being willing to run for each other. I don't care what anyone else says about styles and all that stuff. So we have to get back to running really, really hard for each other and playing with way more energy than we did on Saturday. Um, and if we do that, everything is still there for us. It's, and honestly, like the club when we when we walked into now is completely different. So and this is not disrespectful to anyone, but to have three managers in the year to be relegated, there's a certain level of being broken 
or fractured or whatever you want to call it. So the healing takes a bit of time. We're in a place now where the players are in a completely different uh, spirit to where they were and togetherness, and they have to they have to go the next step. We all do because otherwise, ultimately, if you don't then achieve what you want to achieve, of course, it still leaves a bit of pain and a bit a few question marks on what you are doing. When you win, no one questions anything. So if we win four games, we're not talking about Jack's role in the team. We're not, but we haven't. So it leaves everyone open to question, myself included. Um, so we have to we have to start winning and we have to win in the most important games and we have to find a way to do that and a team to do that and for the next four weeks there may be some changes there may be some tweaks um but it's all about finding a team that can can win and, and see us through in the really really big moments and a good opportunity on paper <clears throat> well, as difficult as the games are to have three games at home in a row gives you a chance to build that momentum and when you talked about ipswich and they're all in I sort of get that feeling the whole place when we went there that the, everyone was all yeah, in. The atmosphere It'd be nice if St Mary's was all in for three games, bang. Everyone yeah, the atmosphere is brilliant. Our fans have been incredible. The frustration in the last few games, I understand. Um, so it's not like a criticism of anyone, but I think more than ever we need to come together now. As I said, like even the relationship between the supporters and their team at the start of the season was not what it was now. But there are still going to be some setbacks and there still are going to be some difficult moments. So now more than ever the team needs them. They need the team to show energy and spirit and fight more than ever. The team has such strong foundation with the identity and the way they play and the way they are so brave. They're the bravest players um, every single game and the risk they take or perceived risk, but the courage it takes to play the way we play. Um, but you have to match that courage with aggression and intensity. And when you bring both, we've had some brilliant moments this season at home, away with the supporters. So now more than ever, we have four weeks left of the season, hopefully seven weeks with the playoffs. I was at Wembley yesterday watching the EFL Trophy final, um, two of my former clubs, took my kids. And more than ever, I want a special day there in seven weeks if that's what it's going to take. If we end up doing it before then because we've been miraculous and other teams have failed, then brilliant. But more than ever, I want that and, and, and the support should want that and it's still there for us. So I understand the frustration, disappointment right now. I'm feeling it, the players are feeling it, the supporters are feeling it, but the end goal is still there. And the way the team plays is so clear. And if I leave in a year, two years, whenever it is, um, this club is going to embark on that journey because it's not going to go for a year. We're going to play this way and then, okay, after that, it's, it's now there. It's now set. So let's keep building on that. The foundations are really strong, but let's, let's make it even stronger and let's, let's have some real... I talk about it. The connection between the whole club will really show itself when you have a difficult moment. At the moment, we're all annoyed and we're frustrated, but we have an opportunity to put it right on the pitch tomorrow, the supporters, the players, ourselves, and to feel much better about ourselves. And three home games could be a massive week for us. If we come out of that with three wins, three good performances, all of a sudden everything feels so different. And now it's about building momentum and showing we are desperate to get to the Premier League. Just finally, if I can, um, I've got quite a lot of admiration for what Mark Robbins has done at Coventry City. Yes, and so uh, they've obviously probably one of the harder teams you could face at the moment, given they've just beaten Leeds. But he's also timing their season very well again, it seems, to make the playoffs for a second year in a row, or trying to, and a cup run, which mm -hmm. they've ridden on. Um, you, I imagine you have a lot of respect for the way they've gone about it. Yeah, I love Mark and Aidy. Um, how they've been with us games, we've always had good games against them back in, in League One with MK. Um, about how they've grown the club. And also, like their club stuck with him through some tough moments. Um, they were bottom of the league last year for quite some time and got to the playoff final because they have strong foundations and a way of doing things. And the players believe in what they're doing and they play with so much energy. They recruit brilliantly for their club. They go and find people every single season. They sell players on. Um, so they have real clarity in what they're doing and, and so much strength in that clarity and togetherness. Um, so, yeah, it's a tough game. And they've done a brilliant job yet again. They're pushing to get into the playoffs to get to the Premier League again. Um, so I don't think you can underestimate the job they've done and how tough the game is. But it's also a, an exciting game for us and I hope that they feel the same way. It's going to be a tough game coming to St Mary's and playing against us right now So because um, we are feeling hurt and frustrated and wounded and we need to react in the right way. James? Russell, have you had some frank conversations with your players this week? Oh, we always have frank conversations with the players, whether we're winning or losing. So, um, no, I think as a group, it's just always honest, always really honest and always really clear on, on I think, what, what's hurt us or what's been brilliant for us. So that doesn't change one bit whether we win, lose or draw. You mentioned a lack of desire to run. Why do you think that's happened? No, I don't, I don't think it's a lack of desire. I, I, we, need to show the, we need to show real desire. Um, and they run. We ran hard on Saturday. We fought hard. That's why we kept a clean sheet away from home. That's why we had 70% of the ball. You can't do that if you're not willing to run. But I'm talking about in the last moments when 
you have to run and not get the ball and know that you're freeing someone else up and all that stuff. And that, at the moment, is not quite where it was. Um, I think if we have an easy option to take, to come to feet rather than run behind, we take it at the moment, and it's not us. So um, we have to make sure we put that right. How do you put that willingness, that fight back into your players? Yeah, by showing the same for us, that we're willing to fight for them, to give everything for them, um, and also keep showing them stuff. And um, we have to we have to step up to do it. It's my fault if they're not willing to do that enough. Um, in terms of the, the playoffs now, have you given up on automatic promotion? Is it, are you now thinking mentally that this is going to be you're going to go the long? Well, way? I have to prepare the players in the right way. So. What is the most realistic option right now is to win the playoffs. Is that simple? But also we have seven games to win before then. Um, to go into the playoffs with real momentum. And if we win seven games, it might be enough. But we are going to have to win seven games because of the season and the quality of the teams above us right now. So we want to win every game. This game, commentary, is the most important one. We can't look beyond that. But also the players have to have in the back of their mind that they, w they want to be part of that because you have a chance to have a special day. I've done it in both ways as a player. I got promoted automatically, promoted via the playoffs. Both require the same mentality. Both require to play each game as it's the most important one. So we are all focused on commentary. But I can't come out and say to you, oh no, all eyes on automatic. Of course we have to be ready for that. And the players have to be ready for that as well. And the supporters. So um, the playoffs can be an amazing way to do it uh, when you have that day. And I've, as I said, I've had that. Um, but we need to be ready for whatever comes and that is only by dealing with Coventry tomorrow. It's really simple and then we can focus on the next one and then the next one after that. It's been the, it's been the process all the way through so that won't change. Thank you. Alfie for 10.30. Question. Right, so, um, I feel like we've asked you this question a couple of times, you've explained it a couple of times, but it is the one question that everybody is asking us constantly this week and it's, you went 21 games unbeaten with a, a very settled back line. People are asking, why don't you go back to that settled back line? Um, we lost against Hull and Bristol City with that back line. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, it's about people have to deserve to play. You don't deserve to play just because you've been involved in a lot of games during that run. It's about the here and now. It's not about looking. And so much of football is like people's careers gets based on what they've done previously and all that stuff. It's not about that. It's about what you're doing right now, how you are training, how you are mentally affecting the, the team um, and the character of the team and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'd say we also had one of our best performances without that back line. Against West Brom away was an incredible performance. It wasn't that back line, so it's not that simple. We have a lot of good players um, and you have to be, be ready and worthy to play in the team at all, all times. So, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wait and see. Someone else made a good point in that. Is that. This club has signed a lot of young players for the years. I think fan base and media, we always give those young players time to develop and they make mistakes. And as a manager, you're relatively young yourself and I think you don't expect to get everything right. Do you think that you should be afforded that same, that liberty, that breathing space to develop and you know, reach your potential as a manager? Um, well, I am by the people that matter, as the owners in terms of my job. So um, if other people have different opinions, it's completely fine, that's the game. You're never going to please anyone. Uh, everyone, I hope I please someone, but not everyone. Um, but yeah, I make mistakes all the time. 60 year old managers make mistakes all the time, I'm pretty sure. But I feel like I'm growing and I'm, I'm improving as a manager and as a, as a leader in my time here. And as I said to you, like, we have gone down a path from where we were to where we are now is, is a huge, huge um, difference in my, in my opinion. Some of the players, what they're doing, some of the players that you see from where they were at the start of the season to where they are now. Um, the club and the team has such a strong identity. I think the fans, they turn up and know what they're going to see. And some people won't enjoy it and some people will. Like, the style of play is, um, can be divisive, I understand that. But when it's in flow, I don't think it can be divisive at all. Um, and I also think it's the best way for a club to be sustainable, to give play young players time to improve and develop and to, to also to win over a period of time. So, yeah, I don't know what's being said really, so I'm not on social media but I presume I'm obviously taking a lot of criticism for, for certain things um, and you expect to in this job and it's part of it and you have to take it and you have to accept it but I'm more critical of myself than anyone will ever be of me outside and um, is why after Saturday you watch the game back two or three times you don't sleep very well uh, because I care and I care about what direction we're going in and not going to get everything right but also you have to uh, 
can sleep at night sometimes because I know I'm giving everything I've got and we challenge each other a lot, the coaching staff, really honest with each other in the same way we are with the players. So ultimately, it's all you can do is be all in and be yourself. And um, I am bullish. I do defend my players. I do defend what we do because I really believe in it. I have conviction in what I do. Um, and ultimately, I believe it will be successful. And I think it will be successful here. And we have really strong foundations now where you keep, keep strengthening them. Um, and I think the most important people at any club are the supporters. But the most important people day to day are the people I work with um, and how they feel about us and what we are doing. And I think they're all in with us. And, that, and, and the minute that changes, there'll be a problem. But until then, I love what I do. I'm enjoying what I do. I enjoy the responsibility of it at a great club. And um, it really isn't all doom and gloom. We're in a good position to get to the Premier League still, which was, was the aim. You mentioned that the playoffs have been in that situation, still only three games away from the Premier League at any given point. Um, also, the flip side of that, it's going to be four clubs with, with top seasons vying for that one place. Um, given the financial implications of going up or not going up, have there been any conversation with you about how this club will be able to compete again next season? Yeah, loads. Yeah, 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 loads, yeah. Can you offer any reassurances or clarity to support us? Well, for next season? Well, I, I will do if we don't make the Premier League, um, but I'm really comfortable with a job in the Premier League or in the Championship again in terms of what's expected, what it's going to look like. But listen, the idea is to get promoted right now, this season, and that's still the aim, and it will be the aim until the very last second, until the very last breath of that game, whatever game that is. Um, but of course, if we don't do it, then after that, I'm sure we'll have a more detailed chat on that. But the aim is to get to the Premier League, mate, and it's that simple, and we want to get there and... Um, I believe we can, and I believe we have such a good chance to do it. Okay, just finally, for me, if I can, I'm not expecting to dig out any individual clubs, but it's come out today that um, Leeds are charging the same £47 pounds for an away ticket. Just uh, in the general state of football, given the, the background that you've come from and where you've been in football, is it disappointing to you just to see that football's going that way? Well, away days are expensive anyway, aren't they? With the travel and the food and, and everything else. So um, I don't know what an average ticket price is in the Championship away, do you? Well, so that's the first pound for Leeds early in the season. Did they? Okay, well, I said every each club has their own uh, prerogative, but um, I think even Leeds fans would appreciate it's quite expensive being a hard working class uh, city on the whole. Um, so I think they'd probably appreciate it's quite expensive as well, but they're not in charge of that. I'm not in charge of that. So each club is has their own prerogative and what they want to charge, but I'm sure Saints fans. As always, we will always be grateful for what they do, the commitment financially, the time. Um, and I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll fill it up uh, regardless. And they can show their frustration on the day by getting right behind their team and hopefully um, supporting us on to, to a win.